there's no stronger bond than one that exists between a parent and a child. It's a bond so strong it can survive time, distance, and seemingly impossible separations. Eddie and Valerie Rivera, they thought they'd never see their daughter after giving her up for adoption. What happened next proved the power of their bonds. We're joined by Eddie and Valerie in Chicago. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Gunnar. Nice to talk to you guys. Hi, it's a pleasure to have you here. So let's start at the beginning. How did you two meet? So I graduated in 88, and there were several schools that came to my high school and were showing different programs um, for the seniors. And one of them that interests me the most was Spartan School of Aeronautics in Oklahoma. I don't know uh, much about aviation, but that's what that school is about. And so I decided to go for it. It was just the most interesting to me at that time. And Eddie, after graduating high school and then taking a year off, you also ended up at Spartan. So what I ended up doing was uh, looking into a, a program that they had at a local uh, hotel um, with the Spartan uh, School of Aeronautics doing their demonstration. And I enjoyed it and I liked it and I decided to uh, go out there. So wait a minute, you're both from Chicago, but it wasn't until you got to Oklahoma when your paths crossed. Yeah, Val about walked into the cafeteria and I noticed her right away. Uh, we were playing pool. She came and talked to some, somebody that I knew, one of my friends, and they told me that she was from Chicago, um, and that's how I started to learn more about her. He, he just said, you know, oh, we're gonna have a get together. So then that's pretty much how we met. Uh, just kind of went to, we all went to um, him and his roommate's place and just kind of hung out, played games. And after dating for a while, what happened next? So when I found out that I was pregnant, it, it was it was a shock. I really didn't know I was pregnant right away. I just started getting morning sickness, and it just a lot of time, I guess, was involved with me discovering that I was pregnant, or maybe I was in denial. Eddie and I both were not working. We didn't have jobs. We were really struggling on rent and food. And Eddie and I were driving in his truck, and I saw a big billboard and it said, are, are you pregnant? Do you need help? I just knew at that time in my life, I wasn't able to even afford myself, let alone a child. So I, I came to that decision to ultimately give Samantha up. Um, if you don't... Um, you know what? Why don't, why don't we give Eddie a few moments? Sorry. As much as I told, as much as I told me I was gonna be strong, it's tough. Hey, I understand if this is too hard for you to talk about. I'll give it a shot. When I found out that she was pregnant, I was, um, I was ecstatic. I was happy, but I was nervous. Um, we were young, it was difficult. Val was a, a strong will, at will person. Um, and there was no making her change her mind. I, I thought that together we would be okay moving forward. Um, but after she had decided to have the adoption, um, there was no changing her mind. So it went from, from excitement to hurt. I mean, even though you're giving your baby up for adoption, you still wanted her to know that she was loved. I had already decided that I wanted bigger and better for this child. When uh, the uh, person that talked to me, she was just very nurturing and caring and said that she would take care of my medical, uh, prenatal vitamins, uh, apartment and clothes that would fit me because I was, of course, uh, getting larger from uh, holding the baby. And so she she did, she took care of all of that. And then ultimately at the end is when, um, I just knew at that time in my life, I wasn't able to even afford myself, let alone a child. So I, I came to that decision to ultimately give Samantha up. 
So let me make sure this is correct. The two of you weren't married, but you still wanted to keep Samantha's birth a secret from all your family, right? Yeah, personally, I dealt with it very um, internally. I didn't share it with anybody, not a soul. But then you decided after you went back to Chicago, that's when you got married. Yes, yeah, so at the time of uh, giving Sam up for adoption, I didn't know that Eddie and I were going to ultimately get married. That was never even a thought or a vision of mine. Um, we were just very young. And then fast forward four years later, uh, we, we ended up getting married and uh, loved that man very much. And then we built a life Got a home in the suburbs, um, then had uh, three more beautiful children, Alex, Brianna, and Nico. I imagine this still weighed heavily on both of you. I thought of her even, I thought, of her, I thought about her a lot, but it really touched home when, I, when we had Brianna, my, uh, my second daughter. At this point, we have a fairly standard adoption. And now it's time to meet the person at the center of the story, Samantha Thomas, who joins us all the way from Oklahoma. Hey, welcome there, Sam. Hey, Kevin, I'm Sam Thomas. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Can you tell us about your earliest memories of your parents? I was adopted at two days old, so all my memories from childhood are my adopted parents. and. They were always very open about the fact that I was adopted, so. Now we'd like to introduce Sam's adopted parents from Oklahoma, Cindy and Richard. Welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin, we're Sam's parents. It's nice to speak with you today. And we're glad you're here. Richard, tell us how you came to adopt Samantha. We had been going through uh, the adoption process for months and months and months and uh, had come across many different adoption agencies, but uh, there was one agency that we had contacted and uh, done an interview with them. And they called us one day and said, would you like a baby girl? And they just said, would you like a baby? We had to call back because we said yes. We didn't know if it was a girl or a boy. Sam, did you always know that you were adopted? I think that my parents told me that I was adopted before I could even really comprehend what that meant. Uh, and, and they used things like books, movies, stories, even um, bedtime stories that they made up. It was always inclusive of my biological parents and them and explaining as best they could that I was adopted. It's always a foreign thing to me whenever people ask me, like, are you angry at your birth family? Or were you, did you feel rejected by them? I can't even comprehend having those feelings, but I, I think that was because the way that my adopted parents um, framed my situation and my story from the get-go. Cindy, how much did you know about Samantha prior to the adoption? We didn't know much about Samantha's background. We knew that her birth parents were both from the Chicago area. We knew they were both students. We knew that they were, um, had a Mexican Guatemalan background and that they were in their late teens. So you made a decision right from the beginning to let Samantha know that she was adopted. Not just letting her know, but some of the uh, the training, if you will, that we had gone through with this, with the uh, state department, um, uh, told us that, you know, you can affect this child's uh, well-being and their their own self worth worth by how you treat this. And if you if you do it with love and understanding, then it will be a good thing for them. So we went out of our way thinking that way, thinking. Well, we have to let her know that this, you know, we love her unconditionally and the people that gave her up for adoption, her birth parents, also love her unconditionally and that it was just this circumstance that happened. 
So Sam, when did you make the decision to try to track down your birth parents? I really didn't have any curiosity to find them until I was 16 and I went to a youth summer camp up in Colorado and we stayed there for a month and did our jobs. And there was a, a girl that served on that team with me who had just given up a child for adoption and she was 16 or 17, I believe. And I remember trying to go to sleep and hearing her crying and she, her adoption that had just happened was an open adoption. And so she would receive pictures of her baby that was six months old at the time and she'd get upset and she'd be, um, you know, she'd be happy, but it was just a very, I, I could see how emotionally torn she was. And I think witnessing, witnessing firsthand what adoption looks like on the other side, that was a huge eye opener for me and, and made me want to find them just to thank them and to just let them know I'm okay. Uh, because I saw what that, what that young mom was going through. And I knew that that was the story for me, was that my mom was just very young. So uh, that was kind of what planted the seed in me to say, you know what, I do, I do wanna try. And where did you start? I found out that there was a letter, a photo, and a blanket that my birth family had left for me at the hospital. Uh, and my parents just had forgotten that those, those items were with the attorney. And so come, you know, 10 years later, I was, I was 28. And so I called, I called the attorney and he had just passed away unexpectedly, I believe like six months prior to that. And so it was kind of a, a search and rescue mission to find where did his legal paperwork go. And so when we did find it, it, it ended up being transferred to a different attorney's office and they immediately went through and destroyed anything that um, had reached its, you know, legal term of how long they had to keep it. And unfortunately, my, my letter and my picture were in that batch of, of paperwork that was destroyed. The only choice we had at that point was to go in front of a judge in the county that I was adopted in and request that my records be open. And that took some doing, but you got the records open. And then what? So once I obtained the original unsealed birth certificate, it was Valerie Lopez was the name on the birth certificates. My adopted parents knew very little about my birth family, but they did know that they were from originally from the Chicago area. So I, I typed in Valerie Lopez, Chicago, and I remember there being hundreds of pages of such a generic name. And, but for whatever reason, I was just drawn to this one name, which was third or fourth on the list. And it said Valerie L. Rivera. I, I basically used that information and went to Facebook and tried to find a correlating, uh, a correlating account. And I found, I found her by the time we got home, which was a two hour drive. So you sent a message, right? And did she respond? It was like 24 hours later that she emailed me back and said, yes, I'm, I'm your mom. And I just sobbed, like I just broke down and sobbed. And so she had left her phone number in that email and told me to text or call anytime. And so I, I texted her immediately and just, I think my first message, I, I just wanted to tell you I'm okay and that I'm, I'm healthy and I'm happy and I hold nothing against you. So after 30 years of giving up her child, Valerie finds out that her child is not only alive, but reaching out to find her. Valerie, how did it feel when you got that message? I was leaving work and I decided to check my voicemail and it was Samantha. Um, honestly, I waited a, f a couple of days for that to kind of sink in. Um, not that I didn't want to call her, not that I wasn't going to reach out to her. It was just me being afraid of that phone call. So we scheduled a call for the next morning at 9, 9 a.m. And I didn't sleep that night. It was like Chris, you know, it was like Christmas Eve as a child. And so didn't sleep at all. And my husband took my kids out for a walk while I sat on my bed. And I don't, I think we didn't even really know what to say to each other at first. And I got in my car and her and I just talked for hours. I just, I had to absorb her, take her in, get to know her. Um, we cried and just kind of caught her up with everything. Um, it was a lot of crying. It was a lot of just being emotional, a lot of, are you okay? And um, assuring her that I was okay and that I was happy. And, and then found out that my mom and my dad ended up getting married uh, four years after they gave me up, I believe. And they were married for 23 years. And so I had three full siblings, his two brothers and a sister. She told me all that she had been through and it was 
a daily phone call for us. It was crazy. It was like dating, and um, in the strangest way, dating your mom. It's the, it, that's the only thing I can describe it as, but you would get giddy when you'd see her text messages, and you would wonder how much longer until she was gonna call. It, it, there's just no, there's no words to describe the emotion of, of really getting to hear your birth mom and hear your story and understand where you come from. So now let's jump back over to Eddie. Hey Eddie, so my question to you is, when did you find out that Samantha contacted Valerie? Before she even told me, when I sat down, she didn't even, even let the words out of her mouth because she had somewhat tears. Well, she was fighting tears. And I'm the one that asked her, did she reach out to you? And at first she was, she wouldn't give me any answer and then she couldn't talk and she said, and I just broke down. I immediately texted my sister. That she found us. Mission completed. Now, Sam, you took your time getting to know your birth parents better. Tell us how you finally arranged to travel to Illinois to see them. It was Labor Day weekend um, in early September of 2017 that we flew to them. I was excited and nervous. Um, I remember my husband, Trent, asking me, why are you nervous at this point, right? We've talked for a, for a month and a half and everything's been so positive, but I think there was just that, still that fear of what if I get there and I'm awkward and like I don't have the same sense of humor as them or... Is, is, So the video that you can see is is that moment of me leaving the car door on their driveway and walking up. And I think I was trying to send my kids ahead of time and Trent was like, no, you go. And so I went and as soon as the door opened, my brother and my sister were right there uh, hugging me and then from there met, hugged my mom and then hugged my dad. Well, my mom, when she hugged me, she, she squeezed very, very tight and and through her tears were saying, I, I, I don't want to let go. I couldn't stop hugging her. I didn't want to stop. Pure joy. My family was finally together. Um, knowing that the last times my hands had touched her at birth and then seeing her walking in and gaining my daughter back. Not only did I have my daughter, but I had two grandkids and a son-in-law. I've gained a lot of love and I've gained a whole other family and that doesn't diminish the family I already have. It's just, it gets to add to it. And I'm very lucky that my adopted family sees it the same way. There's no judgment. So uh, she's just, she's just wonderful. She's an angel. I, tr I treasure our relationship. Cindy and Richard, you were both supportive in Samantha's search for her birth parents. Um, so um, I think the hardest part for me was that this was a path that she had to go on by herself and needed to do by herself. Um, and as a parent, that's hard to let them um, walk alone sometimes. Richard, looking back, would you say that your life was enriched by adopting a daughter? Our lives were enriched immeasurably by adopting Samantha. I mean, one thing that I remember is when we were first, when we first went to the hospital and we were going up before we actually saw Samantha, we weren't sure. And the moment we saw her, there was no question Sorry. I personally would love to thank Cindy and Richard for taking such great care of Samantha. I, when I met Cindy for the first time, 
I brought her an angel, a little gift, because to me, that's what she is to me. She's pure angel. She and Richard together raised Samantha to know that she has two mommies and that we both love her very much. Samantha, what would you say to other adopted children who are thinking about seeking out their birth family? I'm a huge proponent of doing whatever is right for you. I think there's a lot of adoptees out there who, who are too afraid or too anxious or too nervous. And if that's something, or just have flat out have no desire, and I, there's no guilt in that. There should not be any guilt. But if it's something that you are curious about and that you do desire, don't allow the, um, don't allow the anxiety to control that because it is such a fulfilling thing. Now that I have Sam, Samantha back in my life, if I could give any advice, it would be to reach out. Reach out. I had a hole in my, in my heart. She completed. I, I still can't watch that video without crying. It was the purest form of joy and, and a story coming full circle as, as you can get. Um, it, was, it was a very tender moment. I think it, I just I think that's what it was. It was just it was a full circle, full circle moment.